Now the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Just after he was baptized, then Jesus was led up into, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as we've established, it's Lent. And this past Wednesday, when we gathered for Ash Wednesday and the start of our Lenten season, we talked a bit about Lenten practices. Jesus, in his story, was telling us about how to act when it comes to prayer and fasting and giving practices. And I talked a little bit about those practices that we tend to do during the season of Lent. And I was saying that the point of all these teachings was not about what we are and aren't supposed to do, but rather why we would even think about doing them. I propose that we should dig a little bit this season and try to get to the heart of things. Let's get a little dirty. You know, since we already began by smearing ashes on our faces, we may as well keep going. So today on this first Sunday of Lent, we hear more stories that help us delve into the meaning of the things that we do all year round. It helps us understand the things we say and helps us understand words that we pray. Why do we say, week after week and often day after day, a prayer that includes the words, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, or save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil? We say them because we struggle with them. Temptation, trials, evil, they've affected us our whole lives. And from the readings that we just heard, these are issues that have been going on since the beginning of Jesus' ministry and since the beginning of human history. Adam and Eve had the freedom of having absolutely anything around them except one thing, the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Any other tree is okay, any other fruit or pleasure or whatever around them would have been completely acceptable. Yet the temptation of the one unobtainable thing was more than they could handle. Then add to that picture a serpent. I mean, that serpent was busy putting words and thoughts into Adam and Eve's heads, drawing their attention to that one thing that they weren't supposed to touch. Such a crafty animal, as we heard. You know, part of the servant's craftiness was actually knowing the ways of God, which is to say that even evil, which in this case is shown to us by the serpent, knows God. Evil knows God's words and commands. Evil knows the things that oppose God. And evil is crafty. Evil is what followed Jesus immediately after his baptism into the wilderness. And once again, evil, this time in the form of the devil, 
was very crafty to Jesus. Evil waited until the moment was when Jesus was at his weakest and then jumped into action. You know, when he hadn't eaten for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil tempted him with food. Then, when that didn't work, the devil again showed his knowledge of God by quoting scripture and trying to tug at the heartstrings of Jesus. And then when that failed, the devil pulled out all of the stops and offered absolutely everything, kingdoms, powers, prestige. And even though Jesus knew that he could either take those things or follow a path to sacrifice and death, Jesus stood strong in the face of evil. Away from me, Satan, he said, and the evil left him alone. If it were only so easy, if that was even easy. But we face temptations ourselves all the time. And we're constantly surrounded by evil in this world. I think we realize that. It's nothing new. It's been around for all times, and it's even existed before original sin or the fall of man took place. Evil has always been a force against God, providing us with temptations in many forms. And so we respond, not necessarily with Jesus' shouts of, away from me, Satan, but instead with prayers that we, that we could avoid trials and temptations and be led away from evil. So anytime I think about uh, temptations, I think about something that has been formally titled the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. Have you heard of that? The idea centered around a study that was looking at self-control and delayed gratification in children, where a child would be given a small reward with the promise of receiving a second reward if they wait on consuming that first reward until the tester returned. Well, I have an example of that in a video here I wanted to show you. And, and the results of this test, as I mentioned, show us the face of temptation. Okay, sit in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. When I come back, I'll give you another, so then you'll have to. But stay in here and stay in the chair till I come back, okay? All right.
and come back, okay? So you can either eat it right now or you can wait. Either way, okay? Okay. How'd you do? Did you do good? You did? You wanted to eat it, didn't you? Yeah. So did I tell you to give you another one? Okay, now you can have both. You need them. <laughs> so that might not show us evil, though some of the kids might have thought it was. But I think that's what temptation looks like, pure and simple. You know, we have something right in front of us that we want. I mean, really, really want. Did you see their eyes light up when that marshmallow was set down in front of them? I mean, they wanted it. But there was a promise of an even greater reward that would follow if they could restrain themselves just a little bit. But boy, that marshmallow was tempting. It smelled good, it felt good. Those tiny little licks and tiny pieces they were eating, just, oh, it tasted so good. But they couldn't, they couldn't look at it anymore. You know, they were looking away, and it was the only thing in the world that mattered to them at that moment. It was the only thing that they could think about. But those were, you know, those were just kids that didn't know any better. Most of us have the cognitive power to know that there's more to life than what's just in front of us. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. I can become very fixated on things that I truly want or believe that I need, and those things become all-consuming no matter how I try to avoid them. And I'm guessing there's some things that may have tempted you the same way those marshmallows tempted the kids. Even when we know there's something bigger and greater ahead, we get stuck on the now of what we want. Our feelings and desires take over our sensibilities of what truly matters or what should truly be desired. You know, I think we've all been there. We, we have a fridge or a pantry that's full of food, but we want that one thing that we're out of at the moment. Or, we're, you know, our houses are full, with to full of toys and tools and electronics and gadgets and gizmos and... But that one thing that we're missing and that one thing the guy on TV says that we need, that's keeping us up at night, dreaming about it and wanting it. And there's sometimes, you know, when we do a job, we can do it the right way or we can cut a couple little corners and be done a little sooner. Or we can take a couple minutes during the day, of, during our Lenten days and, you know, explore our faith or seek God a little bit. Or we could just wait till tomorrow because, I mean, Really, who's going to know? I mean, that's temptation. And that can be evil, too. Because, like I said, evil knows God. Evil knows what God wants from us. And evil gets right in the way of that happening. Well, sometimes we win, but sometimes evil wins. There's just no getting around it. Evil will and does win with us. But God still wants us to try our best to keep it from happening. And that's why God sent us a Savior who did beat evil, a Savior who looked temptation and death square in the face and said, get away from me, Satan. That Savior showed us that beating evil is possible. He showed us that facing temptation means that we don't always get what we immediately want, but it's our final reward that truly counts. But that reward still comes with a cost, a cost that was paid by Jesus' blood on the cross, but it's a cost that we are still called to take part in. So as we continue with Jesus towards that cross, and we pray those familiar words of our Lord's Prayer. May we be able to face the evil and temptation that we face every day, face it square in the face, and say, 
Get away from me, Satan. Amen.